Hi everyone, I'm GKCS and we are talking about the fast Fourier transform today. So this topic is very important in digital signal processing or image processing and it comes up often in computer programming also. So what you need to do is you have two polynomials which are big, really big polynomials in terms of the degree. So n is a large number and what you do is you take the first polynomial a of x and the second one b of x and you need to multiply them. Evaluating polynomials might occur more often than you think. For example, let's take two random numbers, uh, 2, 1, 9 and uh, 64. Okay, and we need to multiply these two numbers. So one of the ways that you can multiply it is by the school technique that you go for, which is 3 here and then 7 and then 8. The school technique that I go for actually, because I like this. And then you add a 0 here and then multiply this number with 6 and then you add the two results. Now that's fine. The other way you can think of this is that these are two polynomials. And their expression is given by 2 into 10 raised to the power 2 plus 1 into 10 raised to the power 1 plus 9 into 10 raised to the power 0. What about this one? It's 0 into 10 raised to the power 2 plus 4, no, 6. 6 into 10 raised to the power 1 plus 4 into 10 raised to the power 0. And then multiply these two terms. Why might you not want to do this? Well, because essentially you are doing that anyways over here. And why do you want to think in terms of polynomials when you have simple digits given to you? So this is simpler and equally inefficient or efficient. The problem here is not that you can't calculate this efficiently. The problem is what if I change the question a little bit and say I'm going to change the base. So the, the base here, it's decimal. So the base was 10. What if I change that to hexadecimal now? So it becomes 16 when the base has changed. Now that you have these two polynomials, the changed ones, let's write that in green, 16 is the new base, we have a problem. We can't use any of the information we had using our decimal multiplication and use it in our hexadecimal multiplication. All right. So, this is just one base change from 10 to 16. What if the question is that you have Q queries. Each query is going to give you a letter B, a number B, and that will be the base at which you need to evaluate the multiplication of these two polynomials, right? of these two numbers basically. The digits are the same, but the base will change. So you see that this expression is very similar to the expressions I've written above. 16 raised to the power 2, let, let's start from here. 16 raised to the power 0, that's 1. 9 into 1, a of 0 into 1, because it's not multiplied by anything. So a of 0 in this case would be 9. What is a of 1? 16 raised to the power 1, just like x raised to the power 1 over here. So 1 is what should be over here. So a of 1 is 1. a of 2 is multiplied by x square, which is 16 square. And a of 2 therefore would be 2. Similarly, in the, the second polynomial, you have b of 0 as 4. So over here, b of 1 into x is what you want, which is over here. And b of 2 would be 0. So what we have is a polynomial of degree n, in our case 2, and then we are going to evaluate this expression c of x, which is going to give us the result of the multiplication of these two polynomials, which will be of order 2n, which can be shown over here now. So, so I've changed the base to 10, so that our life is a little simpler, and if you try to multiply these two polynomials then, these two numbers basically, then you need to take this base 10 raised to the power 0 and multiply it appropriately. So 10 raised to the power 0 into 10 raised to the power 0 gives you 10 raised to the power 0 and that's why we are multiplying 4 into 9 with 36 and 10 raised to the power 0. Similarly, this term has to be multiplied with this one that is 
10 is to the power 1 into 10 is to the power 0 gives you 10 is to the power 1. 4 into 1 will give you 4. And therefore, this term has to be multiplied with all these terms, making sure that 10 raised to the power is correctly put up. And similarly, this term again with all three terms. And this term has a 0 here, so it doesn't really matter. But you could write those down too. So these are the terms that we have. These are the final terms that you'll get when you're you know, uh, adding them up. So 54 into 10 raised to the power 1 plus 4 into 10 raised to the power 1 gives you 58 into 10 raised to the power 1. And finally, you have the sum as 14, 0, 1, 6. So the important thing is that you can multiply two polynomials using this technique. However, the efficiency is not good. Why? Because you are taking every digit in the second polynomial and doing computations on every digit from the first polynomial. So if the second polynomial has n digits, as over here, then every digit has to also touch n digits in the first one. So that is n into n computations, which is order n square computations, which is very big. Okay, so given a polynomial b, you can represent it in coefficient form and you can also represent it in a different way. Okay, so in the coefficient form, this is b of 0, b of 1 into x, b of 2 into x squared, so on and so forth. But what if we take this entire expression for a given value of x and map that on a graph, right? So for a given value of x, meaning one value of x. So let's say b of 1. This will evaluate to something like the sum of all these coefficients, yeah? So that, let's call that p. What is b of 2? q. What is b of 3? r. So on and so forth. Now, if you take a graph, if you take the y-axis over here and the x-axis over here, and if we say that y is actually equal to b of x, what's going to happen is that you can start plotting points. So let's say when x is equal to 1, which is over here, b is equal to p. Let's say that's here. When x is equal to 2, b is equal to q. Let's say this is q and this is p and this is x at 2. b equal to 3, I mean x equal to 3, then you have y equal to r. So let that be somewhere over here. Like r and at x equal to 3. What you're getting is a set of points and if you plot n plus 1 points, what does that mean? If you plot n plus 1 points, you can represent this entire polynomial without losing any information. Okay, uh, let's take an example. Let's say the degree of the polynomial b is 1. So we have y equal to b of 0 plus b1x. What does that in turn tell you? You have something like y equal to mx plus c, where m is b1 and c is b0. So this is a straight line. How can you plot a straight line with two points? What is the degree? 1. How many points did you need? 2. So if you have two points on the graph, let's draw that over here. If you have two points on the graph, you can draw a unique line between them. Okay, there won't be any other line which can pass through these two points. That's, that's guaranteed. And similarly, if you have three points, then you can recover your polynomial of degree 2 exactly. You'll get b of 0 plus b of 1x plus b of 2x squared. There won't be any issues when you're recovering a polynomial. Even if, let's say, you hypothetically lose this equation. Okay? So we are seeing that given a polynomial of degree n, we need n plus 1 points to be plotted on the graph so that we can efficiently recover it. That's 
okay, that's just news. What can we do with this? What is the definition of c of x? c of x is nothing but a of x into b of x. That is the definition. When you're multiplying these two polynomials, that's exactly what you want. c of x should be equal to a of x into b of x. Now, the problem with coefficient forms is that we need to multiply the corresponding degree term x. But over here, if you are able to efficiently evaluate a of x and b of x, then the multiplication is a trivial operation. This is an O1 operation, right? This multiplication over here. So c of 1 should be equal to a of 1. In fact, is equal to a of 1 into b of 1. Now that's interesting because if you can find out the values of A at different points and the values of B at the same points, then you can find out the values of C for those given points. So if you can find out, let's say y1 equal to A of 1, this is exactly how we are plotting the points and y2 equal to B of 1, then all you need to do to find out C of 1 is a of 1 into b of 1 which is y1 into y2 which is an order 1 operation and so you have one point of c now how can you get the next point of c let's say c of 2 a of 2 b of 2 and those can be evaluated so all you need to do is plot points on this graph for the polynomial c plot enough points so that we can recover that we can recover this polynomial c using that graph Okay, and plotting the points on the graph is not going to be difficult because you can plot A, you can plot B and when you need to plot C, you just multiply those two terms at the corresponding points. Alright, so and how many points do you need to plot for C? You need to plot 2n plus 1 points because it's a 2n degree polynomial. So that's, that's nice, we just need to plot 2n points, right? That can't take too much time. 2 n points plus 1. Yeah. However, there is a problem actually. To plot a point from B, you need to do n computations. Okay, not, not in this brazen brute way. Uh, you need to use something called the Horner's rule. But that's simple enough. You to take a polynomial and then you're, when you're uh, actually evaluating it for a given point, you need to use the Horner's rule and that gives you an order n evaluation. So 2n plus 1 points into order n gives you order n square. So we went through all of this, we took a, we took b, we plotted points for them, we got the points for c by multiplying those points and after everything we see that it still takes order n square. So by the way, uh, going from the coefficient form to the point form is using the Fourier transform. So this would be a Fourier transform but unfortunately it's taking n square which is of no use to us because we could have multiplied these two uh, using the brute force algo which is n square. So we are very close now and that's where the fast Fourier transform comes in. All right. Uh, the thing is that we are talking about plotting n points for a and b. Now plotting n points randomly will give you n square complexity but if you can choose points in a smart way such that they have a particular relation between them then you can bring down the complexity because when you're going to be plotting a point it's going to take you order n and that's the place where it's really hurting us. There is no way that we can uh, bring down the complexity by a factor of 2n over here. Over here, yeah because you need 2n points. So 2n has to be in your equation over here, 2n plus 1. The only thing we can reduce is this order n and we'll see how we can do that right now.